Welcome to part two of season two, episode six, Councils of War, in our Draenora campaign, brought to you by D&D Universe. I am your host, and I'm joined by now the half of the cast that is taking part in the Wood Elven side of the civil war between the elves of the Ebonwood. Just to have a quick recap as to what happened previously, after the dramatic conflict on the border of the High Elven and Wood Elven side, of the Ebonwood, suffering, fortunately, no heavy losses, more so than the unnatural unconsciousness of their squadron leader. They made their way back via the use of some naturistic magic back to the fort. We pick up our scene just as you have essentially been ejected out from the main uh, route that is in the center of the fort. And I believe Shadris is carrying your squadron Mark. leader. Yes, correct. The more. Mm-hmm. Merely. Uh, getting a grip on herself, finally, uh, stands up, and at first you're not quite noticed. You have a moment. What Is she you... unstable, or...? Uh, say again? Is she unstable, or does she have a good like grip on her feet, or...? She she's got a she's got a good grip on herself now. As before, she was very hysterical. Um, you okay, Merely? She says nothing and continues to just gaze over towards the moor. I'll get up and. I'll just grab their attention and say, I'll go submit a report. Take through more and see if there's anyone that can dispel a curse. And he should be back on his feet in no time. Oh, I can do that, but uh, I'll need some time to collect myself again. Good. Take care of the more. I'll check in. Shadris just begins walking in silence and barely follows suit. Um, I'll follow because I kind of need to know where the more is. All right. Well, you. They begin to go towards the barracks hall of the fort and head back towards your assigned little portion of it. Um. That's where they're going to be. Do you want to go with Starak after you like watch them going down the extended hallway? It's more like just uh, like an open... Think think like uh, one of those uh, hangars in an airfield. You know, like just that big like half-cylinder type thing? That's exactly what the barracks looks like. You, you picking up what I'm putting down? It's like a, it's just like a runway kind of thing. Sort of. It's a big old hallway. Yeah, it's just I'm very thinking open. more like a like a cafeteria kind of thing, school cafeteria where it's huge it's open, open space. space. Yes, kind of like a pavilion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone's just on the floor. Well, everyone is like, there's two rows of beds to the left and to the right with a walkway in the center. Um, oh, okay. So it's just a stereotypical like uh, barrack. Sort of. Just cool. Really long. Um, yeah. I'd just like to make sure that uh, I know everything is kind of somber, but uh, if if it's just a curse, I'd like the Shadris merely to know that the more is going to be okay. I've got things under control. So he's then... Not, he's not dead. Uh, so then, Starak, you're going to go look for uh, the commander for Fort Triad? Correct. Alright, so... Go ahead and make a perception check. Correct. Correct! 
Dad at the 12. 12. Dad at the 12. Dad at the 12. Um... You look around and you don't immediately spot him. Um, usually he is out uh, commanding some of the people as they make landfall. Um, or running uh, foot soldiers through drills, but nowhere to be seen. Go ahead and make a history check for me. Mm-hmm. Seven. And you can't remember where his quarters are either. St- we went from something that I had uh, a little more uh, advantage. You're still so dazed from the combat. <laughs> I'll just ask. Like, they'll look to the, the person closest to me. Okay. That doesn't look too busy. Uh, okay. And I'll ask. I'll say, uh, we were just moved here. Holy shite! You're all kinds of cut up? Yes, I need to see the commander. I think you need to see a medic first. He just stares at you after saying that. (laughs) Do I know where that is? Oh yeah, you could probably find somebody in in the barracks to touch you up. Fine, I'll, I'll look around and do that first, apparently. Because I look so beat up, I do. You look <laughs> awful. I'm dying. I'm dying. Yeah, I'll look for someone to touch me up. The adrenaline is still coursing, coursing through. through my veins. Mm-hmm. And just as you begin to make your way towards the barracks, it immediately falls off. Um, and Ugh. you feel so awful. Your limbs feel heavy and you feel like you're about to pass out any moment. Um, and you hear somebody go, oh, shit. And, uh, this fellow in a robe comes up to you. Oh, God. Oh, God. This is really bad. This is really bad. And he's going to go ahead and cast Cure Wounds on you at third level. All right. So you regain, uh, oh, ouch, uh, nine plus four. Um, it wasn't good, okay? <laughs> 13 hit points. <laughs> I threw two, two, five. <laughs> I am looking still very bad. And he's just going to continue okay. to tend to Ish. you. Sit down, sit down, come on. And he's kind uh. of just washing his hands over you. With greenish colored energy dancing at his fingertips. Thank you. The adrenaline finally wore off. And then he uh, turns to his side. Gilbin, send for the commander. He's probably going to want to see him. And then Gilbin, a. Uh, rather stocky looking uh, wood elven fellow uh, heads out of the barracks as you are sort of slightly laying down on a bed sort of propping yourself up um, he heals you up to full using all of his spell slots (laughs) Um, because apparently he's a pretty shitty healer Um, thanks lad but he's gonna that's gonna take a little bit of time so so much for going in to put a report in you have some time before Gilbin returns with uh, the commander do you wish to do I wish to thank my friends that they're not dead. No. <laughs> they're across the barracks from you, my good sir. I know. <laughs> it was a joke. Thanks for not being dead, guys. <laughs> You're welcome. <Yeah. laughs> I'm trying. Thank you. That 
wasn't the best scene to be caught in. Can still, I get your name? Still just uh, washing his hands uh, over your open wounds, and you watch as uh, green tendrils uh, of of magic just begin to enter into your wounds, almost like probing them, um, and then mm -hmm. stitching them back together and then fading away afterwards, kind of closing the wounds. Um, <laughs> I suck at healing, so shut your mouth. Let me concentrate. <laughs> and afterwards, washing his hand back over the sealed wounds and then, like, repairing the skin. Um, and eventually, over time, uh, it looks as if it, as if you were never injured, but you still feel very haggard. Um, just your body is so tired. Jeez. You asked his name, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so... This is just druid number four, so let's get a name for him real quick. <laughs> right. uh, let's throw for number four. let's throw for for vowel sounds. Okay. His name is Kringleduf. No, his name is uh Kareem. Healing Kareem. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. If this was a home game, I would give you an inspiration point. <laughs> uh, but it is not. Um, the name's Kareem, and don't worry about it. You've definitely probably had a worse day than I have. <laughs> It's always exciting to see something happen, though. Was that your squadron that just came in from patrol that just walked past? It looked pretty yeah. beat up, too. We're all in pretty bad shape right now. And it's not easy fighting. As the two of you are having this conversation, um, you're cut off immediately by the sound of a... <clears throat> And you turn and you see uh, the commander of Fort Triad, Cytofall. Um I'm going to get up, but not too quickly. Yes. And, uh, sir. I'll tell you, soldier. <sighs> Are you fit to walk? Other than a little tired, I can walk, yes. Then please return with me to my quarters. I was informed that you would be bedridden. And he turns to look at Gilbin. Though this would seem that it is not the case. Um, then, we will begin to... Uh, converse about the events that have transpired. I'll follow. So you make your way over to his <laughs> quarters, which were right next to the barracks. <laughs> um, Flavor text, can I hit every single corner of the wall? <laughs> sure. You nice. fly you fly four hundred feet to every corner. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> 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 Slam into it. Um, anyway. <laughs> you make your way over to the quarters. Um, it's directly next to the barracks. You don't know how you could have forgotten. Um, and as you make your way inside, it's a very, very messy room. Um, with littered bits of food everywhere. Please sit down. Is there an available seat that's not filled with, like, anything? Nope. Let's see how we go about this. And you watch as he goes around the side of, like, this sort of desk and then sits down on a chair and you hear just a... <laughs> of whatever he just sat on. You do not mind if I 
move these, do you? Just please have a seat. I guess I'll just sit. You're gonna sit down on it? <laughs> I'll move it, I'll move it. Okay, so you move it off onto the floor. Um, and then you sit down, he doesn't seem to pay any mind to it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried what I was gonna sit down on. Dodge the bullet. Uh, <laughs> saving that for later. <laughs> Oof. Please describe the events of this as they have transpired of what happened on your patrol with your squadron. Yes, sir. During patrol, we encountered four enemy hostiles. We sustained major damage and had to retreat. It seems that our captain was knocked out. Although Shadris gave me intel that he seemed to take one of the enemies down with him. Currently, Thumor is in critical condition, but it looks like he will pull through. Please do not leave out any details as to the events that transpired. Please be as specific as possible. It seems that they had two casters, a man wielding two swords. Some magic would not work on him. He was the one who inflicted the critical damage on Thumor. It seemed to place some sort of curse on him. He seems like the most dangerous out of all of them. Along with another man who seemed to wield Was it two tomahawks? No. The... It, was, <laughs> it was a mace and a spellbreaker shield. Mace and a spellbreaker shield? You're I, I your thought of Nakan. Yeah, you did think of Nakan. <laughs> <laughs> And another dangerous one wielding a mace and some sort of shield. He begins to rifle through some papers, realizes that he doesn't have the right paper, and then reaches down and almost falls out of his chair. Did I mention that he's very rotund? I probably didn't. Um, if it wasn't apparent. Um... And From the scattered food. reaches uh, down to the ground and grabs a uh, piece of parchment. And um, we have received reports in the past as to these shields possessing the ability to counter uh, magic. <laughs> Is this accurate? I believe so, sir. We have not received reports of cursed blades, so that is new, and very dire news. Um, you mentioned two sort of casters of spells, yes? Correct. Did these spells uh, fly from their hands, or some sort of implement, or I need the most specific that you can be? I don't remember. Then make a history check. <laughs> Do I make a history check? You make a history check. A sixteen. I want to say they were arrows, but I they can't. They were sure. arrows, and they were not casters. And you actually did not see them. I didn't see them, but all I saw were pews. Yes, you saw the, you saw the arrows. And you saw where they were coming from, but you did not see them in the same method, the way that Chadris was. Oh. Ooh, oh, ooh. Also, with that history check, you would know that um, it was the other spellbreaker that the magic wasn't working on, not the guy with the two swords. Parrot! 
Bacall. <laughs> Wait, what did he say? He said Bacall, like a parrot. <laughs> um, what is this parrot you speak of? Art. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, no, I, you're not allowed to say parrot. Say it. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> That's a home game thing. I know. <laughs> Forgive me, um... It came from arrows, and for all I know, it was only Shadris who could see them. As for the blades that are cursed, they do not reflect anything. Just the shield, I believe. It would appear that you are still quite scattered after the combat. I believe from where you have said that your captain has been very gravely injured. Please rest assured that we have the means of keeping him well and good. He will be fine. So oh, please speak as clearly and calmly as possible everything will turn out fine is were there any ab more abnormalities within the attacking party and most specifically which side struck first Any abnormalities, sir? Yes, any abnormalities. Well, from what I could tell, other than the man with the mace and the shield and the daggers. When you say man, you of course mean a high elf of their kind, of the male variety, yeah? No, sir. His face immediately furrows. It seemed to be a human. He stands up and looks at you. One of the outside ones, yeah? Yes, sir. And he begins to rifle through parchments once again. And he finds a very specific one and holds it up and reads it for a moment. Within the information that I was given when you were assigned to my fort, it would appear here that you were obviously of the outside of the Ebonwood, as well as your <laughs> rifling, rifling through parchments. You didn't turn into a bird, I swear. Um, <laughs> um, there we go, that's a better one. Um, he grabs another one. As well as your other squadron member, Cornelius. I would like you to be completely honest with me. Is it possible that there are more of you? If you want me to be completely honest, that man was, well... I, he resembles someone I traveled with. I don't know if it was him or not, but at that moment, all I thought of was keep my squadron alive. Were there other ones not in the conflict? 
But when you had first entered into this portion of the Avonward. Yes, sir. I see. Now then, prepare your things. We have business to attend to. Meet me by the route, and we will leave in an hour. Oh, sir, do you not want to know who attacked first? We leave within the hour. Yes, sir. I'll get up and go get my stuff. More importantly, to do so, you go back to the barracks and return to everybody. Yeah. No, I, I don't know if they... He, he didn't say to get my squadron, did he? No, he just said to gather like, your yeah. things. It's like... Do I tell them? Do I not? Who knows? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so I head back. Okay, you do so. Like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why you're waiting <laughs> yeah. on me. <laughs> I thought I thought you were gonna say you, you, you return back to see. Everyone's dead. <laughs> like I did. Like I didn't. I didn't know. Like I didn't need to say anything there. Like <laughs> okay. I'm taking a long rest. I guess I won't bother to tell Cornelius or anything. I'll, I'll head back to the group, and as soon as I arrive, I'll check up on Thumor. Knocked out. Cold, laying on the bed. Shadris is nowhere around. And Mira Lee is probably by the more side. Yes. Cool. I'm gonna out loud. Well, hmm. I'm gonna head to the squadron, like, opposite of ours. Okay. And I'm going to ask them if they have any... Oh, excuse me. Uh, yeah? Do you happen to have anyone who can dispel curses? No. Do you know of anyone who can? No. Thank you. Yeah. <sighs> Never mind. I'm grabbing my stuff and leaving. Just me, huh? Well, we'll be up in a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> you take your time, buddy. Cornelius, you are taking a long rest, but that does not mean that you're asleep unless you choose to be. Ow. <laughs> I'd like to think the uh, owl came from, like, a random yeah. barrack member. <laughs> I'm going to try to stay alert until I actually do pass out. Oh, well, then you'll see me grab my stuff and, like, head off. Yeah. Is everything okay, sir? Uh, nothing you really need to worry about. I am being executed. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> I hurt myself today. Well, it's not like you to run off, but it sounds like uh, something serious is going on. Something like that. And with that, I'll walk off. And you hate to see him leave, but you love to watch him go. <laughs> that charisma. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what the kids are calling it these days, then I'm all for it. That charm. <laughs> that pale white hair that flows down to the shoulder. That thick plus five. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Breastplate. <laughs> I wish. Oh, yeah. I don't have that on, though. No, you don't. It's leather. Um, like it. So you make your way 
to <clears throat> the the root, as it is called, the um, sort of import and export of goods between the the forts uh, via the use of uh, wood morphing things between. Um, and you see uh, sight the fall there, um, kind of just waiting and looking up at the sky actually. I'm here. Keep an eye out. Yes, sir. You are looking for a large bird with four legs. It's a griffin. You don't know that. <laughs> it's a griffin. Five points for griffin. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't see a door around here. <laughs> it's a door, Griffin. Um, Are we making perception check? Oh yeah, go ahead. Make it with advantage because he's okay, looking too. Yeah. Where bird? I know C seventeen. Seventeen. I know C seventeen. What? What was the roll? Seventeen. Seventeen. I was like. <laughs> How confuse? M can fuzzle. Um, exactly. Oh God! Ah, filter. There we go. Let's get it in there. <laughs> Slaps mouth. Slaps forehead, more like. Um. So some time passes, and then eventually you feel like the hour is probably up. And uh, the. Hours of twilight begin to cascade over uh, the fort until eventually you hear a <coughs> and a large dark shape followed by another one um, and then another one cascade above uh, the fort leaving a shadow of a strong, powerful body with a tail with a bundle of fur at the end of it and two large wings. And it circles down um, until landing with a very powerful <laughs> sending a cloud of dust into the air. Um, and then when the, when the dust settles, you watch as a figure in green steel armor uh, with a um, a pike strapped to the back, um, almost like a like a lance, a very a very long lance, um, lands with two griffins with saddles behind him. Griffin Rider Boralis reporting. It is a griffin. <laughs> and the huge heads of these half eagle half lion creatures stand before you and make a history check eighteen you rem remember seeing a griffin in your past though it didn't look, look quite like these the sort of white eagle's head with the brownish uh, lion's body is not the same coloration pigment of the griffin that you'd seen before. Instead, the one that you'd seen before was an ashen gray eagle's head with a sort of um, soot uh, black furred body. And the other one shocked you with lightning. If you remember. Yeah, I remember. So with no hesitation, Scythefall gets on uh, uh, one of the griffins and then uh, looks over at you. I've ridden a dragon. This thing is smaller than a dragon. I ain't no feet. Have no fear. Sterark is here. Yeah, but you also, don't, you also don't know if this thing's going to shock you. So you jump on, haphazardly make an animal handling check. I don't actually want to jump. <laughs> Either way, you're still going to... You've never... Ridden a griffin before. Make an animal handling check. 
13. You got the wild one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wild one. Yeah, this is the wild one. Um, and uh, with a very incredible display, um, Boralus just goes, Kya! And then all three of the griffins um, stretch out their full wingspans. And then with one mighty beat of the wings, fly into the air. Um, immediately uh, ascending about 70 feet with that one burst of wind. Jesus um, Christ. These are powerful griffins. Um, they can shoot lightning too, right? <laughs> and what? Before you know it, you've risen so high above uh, Fort Triad. And as you continue to rise until eventually you fly over the tallest trees. Okay. Since I'm flying right now, there's one thing I want to do. Okay. Where where am I in position to everyone else? Am I in the back? Um, it's a it's a an equilateral triangle with you and okay. uh, Cytofall on the left and right, and Boralis at at point. I really have been wanting to try this, but I haven't seen the best place to try and do this. And I think this is the best time because there it, it's like really dark, right? It's a uh, twilight. Save for it's the... orange in the sky. It's orange. Yeah. In an hour or so, it'll be uh, dark. And I'm pretty sure. Oh, what's his name? It starts with an S. Side to fall. <laughs> that's a that's a weird name to try and say. Yep, it's side to fall. Side to fall. Where, where is he looking right now? Uh, looking ahead. I'm gonna try the earring. Make a sleight of hand check. Nineteen. Okay, you try it. And I'm gonna talk into it and try and talk to Amory. Okay, what do you say? Amory, it's me. It's Sterark. Please, as soon as you hear... Well, it, uh, he hears it immediately, right? You don't know? <laughs> well, that's how it usually went. Um, <laughs> Talk to me back as soon as you can, please. I don't know what they're doing to you over here, but it's insanity over here. Tell Nervik we fought him too. So, about the ear wrongs, you know that they have a range um, mm -hmm. that they work within, and you don't ear know wrongs. if that if that range is within uh, until they respond back. Mm -hmm. And you wait a little while, flying forward. Um, and you don't hear anything. Oh, well. That's all I wanted to try. Okay. So then... I wanted to try it when I was out on patrol, too. Ah, bummer. Let's go fly. You continue in flight. You never stop flying um, until eventually you travel for quite some distance. Actually, the ebon wood is massive. Stret as from this height, you can actually see out past the trees towards the horizon where the ocean is, <clears throat> and the mountain peaks. And for a brief moment, in all the time that you've been in the ebon wood, you feel like you're free of it as you see the outside world again and you look forward and you see 
very, very tall branches outstretching from the cascading ocean of the canopy below. And you see a few outstretched branches that have things built upon them, wood morphed, um, some sort of landing area for these griffins, and you're led down, um, and all of them with a <laughs> land uh, with a um, sort of very heavy thudding. What? That was a good griffin sound. It was good. I practiced that. I thought it was okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it reminded me of a rooster crow. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. Um, and you land. Morales immediately hops off and helps uh, start to fall get down. You jump down on your own. And then he turns to you. Uh, Morales immediately leading the other griffins away. And then jumping back on his and then taking flight once more. Um, then Scythefall turns back to you. Well, come on. We have important business to attend to. Lead the way, sir. And he begins to lead you down a very maze-like series of branches. Eventually, uh, you make your way towards one of those pinched hallways that he holds up his uh, left hand uh, and it opens and then closes behind you like a rubber band um, and continue to do so um, and eventually you come to a room and you two are the last two to arrive uh, there are three other people in the room um, one of them wearing a crown of golden thistle branches. Oh boy. That's the head honcho right there. The other wearing um, very regal looking robes um, that depict trees during the four seasons. Um, and then another one who is adorned in very uh, intricate-looking green steel armor. Gil gilded with all sorts of accommodations across the breastplate. The first voice rings out, and immediately you're filled with this sort of terror. We have been expecting you. The figure with the golden thistle branch crown speaks. Make a history check with advantage. It's a six. His voice is so familiar. But it feels like you heard it so long ago. Can't quite remember where you heard it, but you know that you did. Commander of Fort Triad, Sight of Fall, Iron Leaf, I have arrived per request, and I have brought a scout with me. To give a report. Go on. Tell them what you saw. Sorry, repeat. Tell them what you saw. I saw... A human on their side. Not a high elf. We... Or a mace and a shield that seemed to dispel spells. The not more that you wish to say. Yes, of course. 
there was also a smaller man that used dual blades that put a terrible curse usually meant to I assume kill them off after inflicting a wound or so as well as two archers that cast spells off of their arrows man in the grease the green steel speaks out his face obscured by his helmet that comes down to a point in front of him my lord is it finally time for the griffin riders to ride i believe we are ready we could take them by surprise capture a fort gain some ground that is enough slams his hand down on the table in front of him Looks directly at you. Were there any killed? From what I assume, this was from what one of my allies had said. One for one. Our ally was not killed but I'm not sure of what happened to theirs. Rakash! Enter. And dropping down from the ceiling, almost appearing out of invisibility, a sort of white-furred tabaxi drops down from the ceiling and just begins to smell you. And then a moment of silence passes. And then the tabaxi walks behind the seat, or rather throne, that this figure, this commanding figure, sits upon, and then whispers something in his ear. He puts a hand up, and the tabaxi pulls away, and then disappears once again, by a magical means. Almost fading from existence. Is there anything else that you wish to say? The human that was on their side used to be an ally of mine. At the time, I thought of only protecting the squadron. Assuming that the rest of my squadron has been taken, there are two others not like the High Elves. It's a white tabaxi and a dragonborn. Is he still... He's, he's not still blue, is he? You don't know. He's, he's, oh. Also, he's not technically a dragonborn, but you can call him that if that's intended to do. Oh, was he not? Well, dragonborn are lizard people. Oh, yeah, that's right. What the hell was he? <laughs> <laughs> Me don't remember. <laughs> Describe them as you will. He was... A sort of scaled human, you could say. That's as much as I could give you. But those two, no, those three, are very strong. Very, very powerful warriors. The tabaxi whispers something in 
the commanding figure's ear once again. What was the name of this tabaxi? Luvash. His eyebrows furrow. Rakash. Speak. Almost in a commanding way, as if a... an owner to a trained animal. And it's actually kind of off-putting. This Luvash. This is Luvash of the Rising Sun. I'm not sure. He's only told me that much. A tabaxi that carries a bow of wood with branch coiled around, eyes of blue, fur of white and gray. Correct. He is the same, my lord. He looks down for a moment in contemplation. Then he turns to the green steeled figure. How soon can you get a squadron of griffin riders ready? And the figure stops for a moment. We are ready at your beck and call. Any moment that you desire, name a time and a place, and we will get there. They will ride by duskfall. They will find Miss Luvash of the Rising Sun. They will need to be quiet. I want our quietest people. Rakash, you will attend them. You will ride among them and bring Luvash to us. As for the other ones that you spoke of, I have of no interest to them. Though, if they live, and they are as powerful as you say, then they will be on the front lines. You are a soldier of the Wood Elven people of Imar Nator. Do not forsake that on the battlefield. They are no longer the men that you used to know. They fight for the High Elves and those which have slaughtered our people. They are no friends of yours anymore. Yes, sir. We will bring Luvash back. The rising sun must return. Then he turns to the figure in the seasonal robes. I want four druids with that group. Infiltrate and find Luvash. He turns and looks directly at Cytofall. You are dismissed. The next words are not for your ears. Cytofall doesn't say a word, he just leaves. As soon as he exits, Rakash disappears once again. What is your name, soldier? Sterark. 
Have you no surname? No family name? I've forgotten it long ago. He stands up, and on his waist you see a sword, but not a conventional sword. It's twisted, almost in the shape of one half of a helix. And it's almost like a bronzish color with inlaid gemstones going along the side of it that give off this sort of glow. And he walks forward around the table and looks directly at you. His figure is imposing. Make a wisdom save. Seven. He is extremely intimidating. His presence. The power that this individual wields and you feel almost like a pressurized force against your chest. Your heart begins to beat more rapidly and you gaze down and look upon the sword and it seems almost like a twisting serpent. Then everything goes still. He places a hand on your shoulder. Everything turns white. You're in a room, a solid white room. You cannot see the corners or edges of the room. It's not a confined space. You turn and look and you see the man of the brown of golden thorns. He doesn't speak. Instead, he seems to be moving through paintings, uh, walking past them as they begin to take physical shape uh, with each of his steps. And as you gaze upon them, many of them seem blurred for a moment, and you can't quite see what they are as if they were constantly moving. And then you begin to see pictures. A group of individuals, four of them, a green cloak, a blue robe, and sort of grayish metallic armor, a man with a white beard and blue eyes and white hair, and the next painting moves over, these four individuals triumphing over some sort of creature of red skin and horns and a tail with outstretched wings and a open-handed clawed and gingerly laid upon this almost cliff-like scene this white-haired individual standing upon it triumphantly then moving on once again and again and again and again and it then clicks with you these moments, these snapshots of history. And you don't know what's happening. And then suddenly it's completely pulled away from you. And you feel your core trembling. And you don't know why. You don't know what's going on. You're panicking. You're terrified. And then you feel the same weight that was on your shoulder. Remove it. And then everything goes black. And then your vision begins to come back into focus. I thought as much. Sterok. Of the land of Donera. With what grace have you entered my wood? The 
I'm just gonna stand speechless. And you watch as you're looking at him in a mix of terrified awe. You see the sword of Helix on his waist. It was glowing extremely brightly, and now it's slowly dimming. You two are dismissed. You have your orders. And now we're going to have some secret time. At this point, I'd like everybody else to leave the room, and by that I mean we're leaving the room. The other two leave. The green steeled fellow and the seasonal robe fellow. He sits down on the table. Sterak of Donera. How many years has it been since you walked the lands to the east? A hundred? A thousand? I've lost count of time, to be honest. Yet here you stand, a man in his prime. How can this be so? Of course, now I know. But I'd like for you to tell me. As you saw, I made a deal with the god of death. And I also know that you're looking for this. And you see the obsidian black seed of Kalos. And gingerly placed between his thumb and his forefinger. I am. In the past three months, this has made its way from hand to hand to hand, and now it's made its way up to me to decide what I should do with it. Hero of old. Surely, someone of your capability would be able to tell Good from evil, yes. I know what must be done. As much as it pains me, I would much rather hold on to it than destroy it. I don't know what dark evil will be unleashed if that ever did what it was meant to. I'm gonna tell you a little story. A story that my brother told me oh so long ago. So that you might get a bit more of an idea as to what evil you try to plant into my lands. Long ago, there was a man by the name of Krianos. He was a druid, the arch druid of Ildraneth. Long ago, when 
when the dragons walk the lands. Krianos led his druids among these lands before they were the ebon wood. You who dabbles with the god of death and the children of the forsaken gods. You who have stood the test of mortality have earned this story. There once existed an entity named Amagnaron. Amagnaron is one of the four forgotten gods, Ildraneth being one of those same. Amagnaron is the voice within our heads that cries for bloodshed, that cries for the death of many and would bring chaos to all. Ildraneth is the beauty in nature, the life that breathed air into the lungs of those who walked these lands before you and I. Those of which hear the whispers of Amagnaron fall prey to his promises of power, and Krianos did as well. He led an army of creatures of blackened tentacles and death among the valleys and plains of these lands. This happened oh so long before even I graced this land with my presence. And he attempted to bring his god to this realm. The texts of the old forsaken gods lie within the libraries of the high elves within the city of Ishan Nadar. This seed, and he holds up the seed is marked with touches of the void, the abyss. But it has a soul within it. The blade speaks to me. And he unsheathes the blade, holds it up. It tells me of a soul trapped within. The soul of a man named Kalos. Do you know this man? Yes. I ask these questions, though the blade has granted me access the life that you have lived and everything that you have seen. War will come to this land soon, once again. What do you plan to do as a soldier within my army? I plan to fight in the name of the Wood Elves.
You came to this land to corrupt the pool of Ildreneth at the beck and call of a man wrapped of shadow. That very man was a thrall of Krianos. Now I present you the option to play as a god. Will this man die in my hands now? Or will he live? The choice is yours to make. What do you say? If there's a way that he can live without corrupting anything, that would be my choice. He flicks the seed in your direction. Catch it. There are tunnels that run underneath these lands that are used by the druids of Yildreneth to conduct their rituals and keep the wards upon the Evanwood. Find them. So that... They may grant you the help that you desire. When the two sides meet once again, I will open the ground into chasms using my blade. Take this time to get to the tunnels and find the druids and seek their aid. I do not ask this of you. I do not tell you this information lightly. You have gained the wisdom of a man who has lived for centuries. You, who have cheated death itself and fought threats much greater than your own. Should the seals of Ildreneth be broken, and Krianos is to walk these lands again, the world will fall into an age of darkness. And everyone you love and know will die. Or I could have destroyed that soul sacrificed one for the potential lives of hundreds of thousands of more than just elves. What do you say? If you do not mind me asking, what is your name? I am Valsidroth, High King of the True Elves. He looks at the tree wall to the right. Thank you for this opportunity. The elves 
of the North. They hold on to a belief that my brother used to tell me we were children. There exists a prophecy that as the world begins to fall to darkness, dragons would fill the skies. And from the east, a pillar of darkness would rise, as well as the west. And then, the sounds of two bells would ring out. And hope would fall across the land. Remove your bell from your neck, Sterak. I'll do so. You are one of the bearers of the tolls. For this I tell you this story. Fate has placed its eyes upon you, as well as the souls of the thousands who died in Krianos' first coming. The eyes of history lay upon you. You serve a purpose greater than that of this war. You will return to Fort Triad. And when the moment comes, you will remember all of this. And he raises the sword and it begins to glow very brightly. And the last thing you remember is both of the other two people walking out of the room. You are dismissed. Griffin is waiting to take you back to Fort Triad. Thank you for your service, soldier. Please earn. Please go and use your well-earned rest. Sir. And I'll leave. And while it is rather early, that is where we're going to end tonight's episode. Over right here at D Universe, this has been Draenor Season 2, Episode 6, Part 2, Councils of War. For everybody here at TND Universe, we'd like to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.